The next speaker, uh, Dr. Ken Roche, and he will be speaking on hermetic wheat storage for smallholder farmers in India. He had collaboration with uh, Hisar Agriculture University, uh, Haryana, as well as recently they have developed collaboration with my university, Rajendra Agriculture University. And probably Dr. Kent Roche doesn't need any introduction because uh, during last uh, two and a half days we have been uh, regularly interacting with Dr. Kent Roche. So I'll request Dr. Kent Roche to please come and Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Okay, um, just want to uh, give you some highlights of this study that we did in collaboration with uh, several parties, and I'd like to acknowledge my, my co-authors. Uh, uh, Pavel Samovat actually was uh, working at uh, Haryana Ag University when we first met him, and he, he helped coordinate a lot of details with, with the experiments, and he's now a PhD candidate uh, on our campus, so it's worked out very well for everybody. And Haibo Huang was uh, key in getting the uh, instrumentation to work on this project. So, uh, Sun Sunil Kumar uh, was the master student tasked with doing a lot of the uh, characterization, and Mukesh Gurg was our faculty collaborator in ag engineering at HAU. Okay, so just to give you the lay of the land here, um, our, our objective was to tailor a small-scale study for uh, smallholder farmers, uh, and we noticed that there was a, a little bit of absence of uh, uh, objective data um, collected uh, uh, in a ex you know, rigorous experimental fashion uh, to address the high post-harvest loss of wheat and various other crops. We found some collaborators at HAU. Um, that were willing to work with us in, in, in getting this uh, study underway. We used uh, typical uh, storage methods, the metallic bins, which actually are on display here, uh, in addition to the ubiquitous gunny bags, and a hermetic storage technique. Uh, we were able to instrument each of the, of the techniques with uh, uh, CO2 temperature and relative humidity sensors so we could monitor how well things were going. Um, and then at monthly intervals, we uh, characterized the wheat um, in each storage structure over time to see um, what changes there were. Oops, wrong way. So this kind of gives you the, the three basic treatments. Actually, we threw in another one. Um, the hermetic storage bags uh, at relatively low moisture content and uh, higher moisture content. Um, <clears throat> with hermetic storage, you can actually, if you have overly dried grain, uh, the respiration is, rate is low enough that uh, you won't get enough CO2 production. So we were concerned <coughs> that, uh, especially in Haryana, they have the luxury that uh, during the wheat harvest, they were telling us, well, you'll never see 13% uh, uh, moisture content because it dries down so rapidly, it's actually a challenge to get it out of the field before it gets below 10%. So they actually had to rehydrate uh, some of the wheat that was harvested, uh, so we had a range of moisture contents. Um, we also did the metallic bins and the gunny bags. These are, these are the storage, this is kind of the, the official start dates of the storage. Two of these uh, hermetic bags, we actually uh, infested them with uh, lesser grain borer uh, to begin with uh, to, to verify whether or not the, the bags were actually protected. Um, the wheat was all from the same um, area, the same variety grown at the research farm uh, at HAU. So this kind of gives you an idea of the instrumentation. This is just for the uh, uh, hermetic bag, but it shows that we had uh, temperature and relative humidity at three locations within the uh, large bag, uh, as well as CO2 in the center. And this is what the uh, three uh, storage structures look like with a hermetic bag, <coughs> metallic bin, which is nominally a one-ton structure as well, and then uh, two, two stacks of gunny bags. And we put instrumentation in each one just to, to show um, <coughs> the various levels of CO2 and so forth. So this, is, this gives the, the ambient conditions. Um, 
We set these up on campus at HAU, so it was a fairly protected area. Uh, it wasn't exposed to rain or anything like this, but it was still exposed to ambient conditions. And you can see as the year progresses, uh, you know, it's pretty hot in, in July and August, and then it cooled down around in January, and then began to warm up towards the end of the study. And then relative humidities <coughs> varied a great deal uh, between 50 and 90% relative humidity. Nothing too unusual. This shows the uh, CO2 buildup in the hermetic bags and uh, it took off and uh, reached very high levels uh, at the beginning of the study uh, when temperatures were relatively high within the stored grain. And you can see right here that uh, uh, the CO2 levels dropped down a little bit, uh, we believe, because the temperatures were lower, so respiration rates were lower. Uh, as we were sampling, pulling samples out of these bags monthly, we had to unseal the bag, pull out our sample, and then, uh, and then seal the bag again. And you, you really can't tell uh, wh when we pulled the samples out, the CO2 levels recovered nicely after we reestablished the seal. And this just validates that there's not much CO2 if you don't have a hermetic seal. Um, the, uh, B stands for the metallic bin, so you had a little bit of CO2 buildup, but really not enough to protect the crop or anything like that. And of course, gunny bags had negligible CO2 increases. So uh, to, uh, obviously to get a sample out for uh, wheat quality testing as well as moisture content and so forth, we had to uh, pull samples out of each uh, storage structure. We actually had a common uh, sample port for the bag that, that we would um, glue a seal back over again uh, when we were done, and then same way with the others as well. Moisture contents did not really dri uh, drift that much during the course of the study. Um, these were in covered storage, so they weren't exposed to sunlight or anything like that, would, that which would have made it uh, worse. Um, <clears throat> but you can see that the gunny bags uh, varied between 12 and 14 percent, and the uh, hermetic bags uh, the two storage treatments uh, kind of maintain their, roughly maintain their, their initial moisture content over time. But now you can begin to see the changes in other quality aspects that uh, add value to the, the storage method. You can see that the germination dropped off rather quickly here for the, uh, the uh, gunny bag storage, which started up around 95% uh, germination rate and then continued to drop rather rapidly, while the metallic bins and the hermetically stored material maintained pretty good uh, germination rate. That probably is due to the amount of insect infestation, although we didn't have uh, uh, the luxury of uh, perhaps putting the same uh, batch of grain in cold storage over the same period of time to see if uh, perhaps this variety doesn't maintain germination rates very well, but you can see that the percent insect board grains uh, increased dramatically for gunny, gunny bags uh, and somewhat for the metallic bins. It increased to about 2% by the end of the study. And the hermetic storage uh, basically had negligible um, insect damage. This slide takes a little bit of explanation. Uh, one, of the, one of the tests that we did was a, a milling study so that we would determine the uh, you know, lab scale flour milling yield uh, and we would pull samples out once a month. So what, what you can focus on here is the relative ranking of the, of the storage treatments, not the change month to month. That's been documented over uh, many years that actually as grain ages, regardless of uh, damage level, the milling yields actually shift over time and it actually increases with age up to a point. And you can see here that consistently the gunny bags, probably due to the insect damage as much as anything else, uh, always had a lower milling yield than the other methods. So that's the, the takeaway here. Um, the, the metallic bins really didn't do much worse or, or better than the hermetic bags over the course of time. So I'd like to leave you with some, some observations uh, from this relatively small study. Um, yes, the hermetic bags did establish enough um, CO2 to protect from insect infestation. Um, seemed to vary with temperature, of course, so uh, that's, that's a well-established fact with respiration. Um, but it was still high enough rate to uh, protect 
from insect infestation. Uh, we didn't ex achieve perfect gas tightness, but it was still sufficient. Um, we still had very good seed viability um, with a hermetically stored material, about 88% seed vi viability. Um, and metallic bins and uh, gun ink bags, of course, were quite a bit lower. Uh, this, was, this brought out another idea that really wasn't a part of our objectives was is that this would be an ideal way to store your seed for the following year. Um, this region, they grow quite a bit of mustard, and so it's a higher value crop uh, than, than wheat. And uh, when they saw these results, they were thinking that uh, one thing that they would like to do is test it on uh, storage of mustard uh, for preservation for seed purposes uh, for this, this other crop. Uh, another advantage of hermetic storage is there was no chemical uh, addition needed, no fumigation needed uh, to protect against in insect infestation. This was uh, designed to be a, for a small scale, so in-house storage or at least on-farm storage. Um, and traditionally, of course, they fumigate within the house household. Everybody leaves and then they fumigate to wipe out the insects that uh, are invading the, the grain storage. And so this, this brings up a, a, an advantage of hermetic storage is that you don't have to introduce chemicals into the household. Um, the, uh, the, the, the level of uh, infestation was very low compared to the other treatment methods, uh, significantly lower. Uh, and it was quite obvious that if you wanted to store your grain in gunny bags, you had to use chemicals. There just would be no way to maintain quality and keep the insects out. So there's many ideas that could come from this. Uh, this was not an exhaustive study. We only used one batch of wheat for one, for one uh, harvest period. Uh, we're hoping to extend it uh, to other areas, uh, specifically in Bihar with other crops, uh, to see how well this will work. Um, and of course, we can't. We didn't have all the sensors that uh, any engineer would like to have. We would like to have known what the O2 levels were. Uh, while the CO2 increased, we we didn't measure um, oxygen, um, so we'd like to measure that in the future to see if it's a con you know to document the co combination of CO2 and O2 levels of being effective. Um, and uh, let's see, I think that's that's about all. I want to thank the ADM Institute for funding this study, as well as our collaborator and the Vice Chancellor at HAU. So, thank you. Thank you.